Welcome to our bagger test. I know it's not allowed to call it a Goldbinger bagger, but this is a bagger test. We're going to call it a bagger test. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we are going on a bit of a trip on these bikes. We've both done individual first rides on these machines. I've done one on the Goldwing, Greg's done one on the K1600, and today is the big comparison test. So we're going to be traveling, well, the whole day out on the bikes, yep. basically, isn't it? Yep. Um, heading up to Winchester, full test, then we're going across to the Isle of Wight um, for a bit of lunch, and then basically give you a sum up and let you know which of these bikes we think is the best. Yeah, and it's, they're probably direct competitors in most regards, aren't they, really? I yeah. think closest thing you're going to get. And uh, it's probably worth mentioning that it's uh, very cold today. Very, very. So it'll be a good test to see what the protection is like on these sort of bikes and whether you could potentially use them all year round. Yeah. We couldn't have picked a better day to probably test these bikes no. out from a, a weather protection point of view. Exactly. And it is cold. When we say cold, it's about zero degrees most of the day. Yeah, oh, yeah exactly. So sit back, grab yourself a cuppa or some other beverage and shop seat, roll the intro. start of the day as you can see it is rather nippy today <laughs> just a tad at, at the, just a tad on the chilly side what's your, what, what does the uh, beam say the temperature is going well it's flashing uh minus zero no zero degrees it goes blue and puts a little snowflake and it was actually minus one a moment ago so it's around zero between minus one and zero so it's pretty pretty cold so i've got heated seat heated grips heated gloves everything that i could possibly do to keep myself warm <laughs> these are the only bikes you'd consider even going out in these conditions on aren't they i mean they're Definitely. so yeah it's it's proper deep winter today and that proper cold isn't it and yeah my bike's covered in ice so that's lovely i don't know if you guys saw my first ride on this if you haven't we've both done first rides on this on these machines so i'll put a card at the top John, of my John, first this ride way, this way this oh. way oh, don't, don't hey. da, da, da. i'll have to go this don't way now, go. i'm screwed I did, so, yeah I'll, I'll, um, I'll come round and come back yeah yeah <laughs> and then let first left when you come back round yeah so i've done a first ride on this machine link at the top greg's also done a first ride on the k1600 another link at the top and then uh, on this video, we've not ridden each other's bikes yet. So on this video, we're going to swap halfway through the day or at some point, or maybe multiple times during the day. And we can, we can let you know how they feel compared to each other, which I think would be really interesting. Well, what can I say? We're only, well, probably less than five minutes in and Chops has gone the wrong way, nearly pulled out in front of a car and uh, was about to show you what the crash protection is or isn't like on a Honda Goldwing. So before we get uh, too far into this video, I've got to say a massive, we've got a bit of a, a, a primary sponsor for this video. So massive thanks to Bimoto for stepping up and putting a bit of money in the pot so we can do these types of reviews. And like I say, initially we were going to be going overnight to Wales, which obviously involves a lot of cost of fuel accommodation. So Bimoto offered to help us out with a bit of money in the pot. So. Uh, yeah, so lunch is on B-Moto and the fuel, Gregoire. Yeah, I think my only complaint about B-Moto is they've not done much with the weather today, have they? They could have done a, been a bit more helpful, but I guess can't hold it against them. So how have you been finding the old K1600 then, mate? Really good, actually. It's um, really comfortable to ride, John, and the, the sort of highlights are just the refinement of it, I think. Everything feels really well put together, and the engine as well is... It's like a masterpiece for this sort of bike. It's so flexible, so smooth. There's no vibes. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's impressive. If you want a bike to do big miles on, or even just to use as almost a car replacement in a way, I think it's really good. Um, so yeah, loving it, John, actually. Loving it. How about you? Uh, I've all, you know, I've always been a bit of a bit resistant to try a gold ring. You know, I'm. I've always said, you know, if you need a reverse gear on your bike, it's too big. If you can't filter on your bike, it's too big. You might as well get a car. <laughs> so you know, if I end up loving this, which ugh, is sort of looking like that already, I may have to eat those words. <laughs> the convert already. The convert. I know. 
And what I really love about it, I mean, it says it's one degree on my bike at the moment, and there is so much weather protection on this. I mean, I can't even feel any air really at all at all you know it's it's incredible and it really does make it an all all year round bike which is unbelievable that's right and there's no um even things like winter maintenance because they're sharp drive you haven't got chains to worry about so i think if you wanted an all round all year round proposition you know less less of just a hobby but actually a mode of transport as well i think they are pretty good you know the original gold wings were in my eyes they seem to be bigger than the one that you're riding now they looked massive whereas that does seem sensible size still big isn't it but still big and i think because it's low here you know it, it sort of opens it out in front of you a little bit um i'm be really interested to try that k1600 and, and maybe we have a little bit of a swap in a minute and we're you know we're, we're swapped throughout the day you know what i mean we're swapped back and forth because uh, yeah i'm really intrigued to see what that, that's like because on paper that's got the gold ring licked it, it beats it in every respect it's, it's slightly lighter it's way got way more horsepower it's got a bit more torque it's probably even got a bit more tech similar tech on them but maybe a little bit more tech so if it's top trumps you know the the k1600 does have it i think ultimately what it's going to come down to in part is which one you prefer the look of isn't it and you know just the character of because this is a straight six bmw transverse whereas yours is a flat six boxer engine isn't it and so the character is going to be completely different i guess this will be smoother but yours might have a bit more character i'll give that some thought if i'm not being honest what i think my conclusion is going to be without without trying this is all preconceptions without trying the bmw i think this probably isn't going to be as good but it's going to have more character and you know i think it will it could win over on the charm side of it rather than the techni technicalities if you see what i mean I mean, I think this engine's fantastic. I, I think it's just oil-cooled. I don't think it's water-cooled, this engine. And it's like the old 911 air-cooled engines. You know, it's got that, that sort of sound to it, that sort of feel to it. So it's, it's brimming with character, this. As close as you're going to get to a Porsche, isn't it? <laughs> it's <only> it is. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of assumed that the, you know, when, before we'd even seen either of them, I, I assumed that the Goldwing would be better totally based on nothing other than perception but i've not even ridden the gold wing yet and i've only ridden this and i honestly if, if you wanted this sort of bike and you only rode this you wouldn't be disappointed that that is a fact yeah that's it R ridden in isolation you, you i'm sure you'd be completely over the moon with either of these bikes but if you want to know which one is the best in our opinion stay tuned watch this roundabout it might be a bit greasy i'm gonna take it steady today yeah, we got to have our little uh, customary drag race though, mate. We've got to have the drag race. We've got to do the drag race. There's no, there's no getting away from it. So there you go, you'll see it here first. What is the crash protection like when you come falling off two massive touring bikes? That's one of the tests, isn't it? How cheap is it to repair after the crash? Don't say that, I don't want any incidents. B-Moto, so what, we covered. B-Moto sorted us, we're, we're sorted. They won't mind if we smash them both up. So let's have a little uh, a little swap ski, shall we? A little quick initial impressions of the uh, K16. Oh, it's cold, isn't it? There you go, mate. Cheers, Ooh. mate. Oh, that's your underpants. Oh, that's it, mate. Cheers. Pair of great Do you want any fronts. sheen? Give it a wipe. No, I think it's, so, it's damp. It'll Do you want some on yours? You need yeah, a bit, yours, bit, sheen, bit of sheen on mine, mate, if you don't mind. Look at this. Seriously cold today. What are we doing? Things we do for you guys. Right, is this all pretty straightforward? BMW, you, BMW usual, yeah, is it? Yeah, I think, I think you'll be right at home, John. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've got a gearbox on this. Oh. It's going to be weird having to change gear. Oh, the pegs are way higher on this. Really high pegs. Oh, these are further forward. Much further forward, aren't they? Yeah, they're further. This is more like, <laughs> like an armchair. <laughs> it is like an armchair, that. This yeah. is, yeah, the, the, the pegs are much higher. I've got, you know, the actual knee angle's quite much more cute on this, much more folded over knees. But you have got the boards, haven't you, to stretch your legs a bit. 
you have got the boards on this but yeah that's quite a tight leg actually I'm quite surprised yeah this um the seat feels quite a lot different on this as well actually different shape completely completely it's wicker yeah. wide uh, I mean this my ass yeah. isn't is overflowing on this seat a little bit can't blame the seat for that mate and there's no seat big enough for my ass <laughs> apart from the one on that bike that one on that bike is big enough for my ass Oh, this is this is way more punchy. This has got way more go. Mind you, I am in I am in third gear. I forgot to change gear. <laughs> <laughs> I've got too used to that DCT. I forgot to change gear. No wonder it felt so punchy. Yeah, this, I'm at, this this feels more agile. It changes direction quicker. Yeah, this feels a lot more sporty. I would say off the bat, without a doubt. Yeah, because that's the K1600 touring bike, been modified into a bagger style isn't it really yes yeah absolutely whereas you know this is a bike the gold wings from the ground up and it is what it is so i guess you know that's why they're going to be different they're, but i still think having jumped on this never ridden one of these ever in my life a gold wing um it's still this feels really good and really easy isn't it easy to ride it's so good isn't it I, and uh, i'm actually feeling a lock holder on this i'm getting i'm getting air on my helmet i'm not as well protected i mean that's the screen is humongous on that but even my legs i've got more protection around my legs i'm sure i have no there's more protection on this because my jeans were flapping uh, these are riding jeans everyone before you moan um they were flapping quite a lot more on the outside of the leg on the bmw i agree the wind, wind protection is definitely superior on this it definitely is isn't it but this is definitely more agile i mean this 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 really tips quickly doesn't it it's, it's yeah it's it's decent handling isn't it it's surprising and and you're in road uh, road mode at the moment you put it in dynamic and the suspension on the bmw gets you know quite a bit noticeably more taut and it's surprisingly you can hustle it actually you know we're again relatively even if we don't get a chance to test out the twisties today i can tell you this is going to be all over the gold wing from a handling point of view but is that the point i'm not sure but i mean that, as i said in my first ride though if you're going on a trip to the to the you know to the alps when you get there you want to have some fun don't you well i, I would i would that, no that's true yeah that's true i'm coming through coming through come on now let's have a look at her oh suits you sir <laughs> <laughs> the brakes are sharper on this as well they're much i mean every, everything on this bike i think is sharper even the angles and the looks of it is sharper isn't it no, i'm just going on the brakes now john and there's yeah there, there's a lot there are a lot uh, stronger brakes on the bmw but again it's not to say that you can't stop on a on the honda but it, it just feels a lot the whole thing just feels more gentle which i think would encourage more cruisy riding actually this this it's like getting into like a big s-class mercedes i think the uh, the honda goldwing where you don't really want to go banzai you just just sort of purr along really i think out of the two i would say this you know if you're an ex-hooligan like me or, or not so ex in our case but i i think from a hooligan's point of view if you wanted the only bike to do everything i think this would definitely have that more of a hooligan hooligan side to it uh, yeah this is going to be uh ooh, it's a shame we're not going to well maybe we'll have some dry roads later we've got some blue sky I and mean, it'd be nice if it would dry out and we could have a little bit of a chuck around but you can just tell this is going to be further like it's going to be so much better yeah and the bmw is 100 and uh, 160 horse claimed whereas the gold ring is 110 is it 25 125 i beg your pardon 125 so uh, which is which is fine i mean it's, it's plenty isn't it but it's it's a big difference isn't it i found the gold wing on the motorway doing 80 it felt like you were really sort of maxed out from a not from a cruising point of view you think if you're pushing over 80 you can just see the fuel consumption going through the roof do you know what i mean whereas i don't think so on this but but again i i mean it's interesting to know so people get an impression but again it's a bit irrelevant because i don't think you're going to sit it over 80 on either of these bikes for a prolonged time it's just not what it's all about is it really you know you're not exactly going to be booking into your latest no limits track down there are you? <laughs> it's amazing how quickly you get into the dct gearbox on this i know i must i keep forgetting to change gear i do really like i think i prefer that dct from a just to it maybe even you hit the twisties you won't but from a just cruising around point of view but saying that this engine is really flexible isn't it 
it, I mean, you can sort of leave it in a higher gear and it, it pulls really well, doesn't it? Even from like fifth. Yeah, but I think the gearbox, the DCT gearbox, because you're pro mechanically engaged in each of the gears, it feels nice actually. It doesn't feel like an auto and it certainly doesn't feel like a scooter where they've got the, you know, the sort of like continuously varying gearboxes. It doesn't feel like that at all. I actually think it works very well. I, I agree. I mean, it's a, it can be a little bit clunky at times, but you know, I think that's just the, just the nature of the gearbox. It's obviously, you know, it's quite a big lazy gearbox, isn't it? I've already decided if I bought a Goldwing, I would want this gearbox, the DCT. I think it suits it. I think you're right. And after going back to this, I'm missing. I'm, I'm, it's annoying me having to change gear. I've turned into the ultimate lazy man. And the Goldwing, when you just sort of give it that little it's, it's very quick off the throttle i like it yeah and that's in tour mode if you, if you go if you think it's a sport it, it holds on to the gears much more it's a, it's a quite a fast little twistyish road up here so we're, we're banging them into sport and we're and we have a little play another thing i love with the gold wing while we're talking of praise for the gold wing is the whole of switch gear and everything is just for the gold wing there's no switch gear which is one other because all this bmw switch gears and all the other models you know, this is all on all the gs switch gear whereas that everything is dedicated for the gold wing yeah, which i really like that the whole bike itself you know, there's no shared components on display obviously there may be some electrical whatever and some mechanical but there's you know everything is is gold wing it's nothing shared with the other other models So quick battery swap we've had a freeze up of the hero 4 oh, i bought a new camera for greg i bought a bought a hero 11 to use we both had decent new gopros and then my hero 10 packed up on that last first ride video and it's been sent back to gopro now so uh, quite annoying but the hero 4 is to the rescue for those that care about these things <laughs> and that's nobody oh this Sounds like a sports bike. I think maybe the K6600 isn't quite as long. Maybe it's not quite as long. I'll have to look at check the wheelbase figures. Perhaps that's because I can't I can't believe how nimble it feels when you consider the engine isn't a boxer engine. It hasn't got really low centre of gravity with the engine. It's a bit higher on this. But they've obviously got the geometry set to try and recover some of you know recover that agility, haven't they? It's quicker, I think it's smoother. Um it handles better, it's more agile. But again, it's all relative, it, it ain't a sports bike. I mean, they say on the Golden, you won't notice the weight when you get going. This is even more so. On the Honda front, I think they're right. You don't really notice the weight either. I mean, it's, it's a big bike, but it definitely feel, you can feel the weight is very low down, but it just feels a lot more, not a lot more, it feels just, the whole thing is just more relaxed, isn't it? And a bit lazier on the Honda. Yeah, agreed. But I think I think you know this is another five kilos lighter than Honda, so there's not much in it. But it feels it feels thirty kilos lighter though. Honestly, I, I think it feels much lighter than the Honda. Once it's rolling, I don't know what they're like to push around, and then maybe that weight becomes more apparent at slower speed. The BMW is you you can't really push it around. You you need to get on the bar. I've, I've tried and it's very very hard because uh, it's physically so big so it's sort of hard even to just to hold it if you know what i mean because you can't get over the bike properly so the, the way to handle it is to get on it and then use the reverse gear and then first gear reverse gear obviously to move it backwards which is brilliant on it and the first gear just to sort of edge it forward and the clutch action so you can't creep forward like you can on the honda but it's so light it's easy but um yeah so it, it does make it easy to move it around but you've got to get on it um, I think it's the only thing I would say and I guess the Honda is similar. Have you pushed it around at all? I only feel that I've pushed it just then back at the petrol station when I pushed it away from the pump. That's the first time I pushed it and it, and it didn't feel too bad. It didn't feel too bad but yeah it's exactly the same. I mean you, you'd really just get on it and use the creep back and forward. Yeah just use, use the let the engine and the bike do all the work really isn't it? You know I think about my my father who is you know getting on now and he still rides and he does struggle one of the things that he struggles with and worries about sometimes is you know just physically moving the bike out of the garage and up the drive and all the, you know just that sort of you know when he's riding it's fine and you know and he'd be scared off getting something like these because you know they're even bigger and heavier but in some ways because the seats are low and you're 
bent legged, uh, flat footed, and you can use the engines and the creep modes and that to move back and forth. In some ways, they're probably easier. Yeah, it's like he doesn't try and push his car around, does he? <laughs> no, well, no, exactly. No, but I, honestly, I think you know he could ride this one of these into his garage, reverse it out on the power, turn it round. I think he'd find it easy. And you sat on it, so you don't feel like you're going to drop it because you sat on it. Yeah, I think you're onto something there. I really do. I don't know if the seat is lower on the Honda. I think about same same seat height feels similar actually. I, I feel like I'm sat higher on this. I think I think this just feels higher because the pegs are higher. You your leg. I'd say the pegs are higher, but the pegs are more. Your legs are a bit more cramped on this, so it feels like maybe you're a bit higher. Mind you, I haven't tried out the boards yet. Let's try the boards. I do like her. No, the boards are great on the BMW. If you're doing a long motorway jaunt and you can put your leg on the peg and then move it forward, it's it's really nice actually. Because you get you end up in pain after a while just because you've been in one position don't you so the fact you can move your legs around on the bmw i think is a really good idea if it was auto it'd be even better wouldn't it <laughs> if it was auto you didn't have to worry about changing gear because you've got your foot back to change gear but you'd only use that mainly on when you're cruising along on a a road or a motorway wouldn't you and then you're not changing gear anyway are you much you know what? i like my feet forward I, I like a bit of feet forward action so I quite like that. that that's, that's transformed the bike a bit more for me, actually, putting your feet up there. It's gone from feeling like a sporty bike, now it feels like a, now it feels like a big tourer, with my feet up on the boards. I'm really, really liking this Goldwing. Oh, you, you've, been, you've been converted, mate, haven't you? It hasn't taken long. He's only been on it 10 minutes and he's been converted already. <laughs> it's really good. For what it's supposed to do, it does it so well. It is so comfortable it's like all the benefits of a bike and all the benefits of a car in one it's the protection the weather protection it is so cold today and it isn't cold on this bike the suspension is flawless you can feel what's going on i think but it you can't feel any bumps that's true you, you can oh, i didn't mention that you do you are getting that feedback aren't you yeah you get the feedback, but without any of the harshness, it's, it's very clever. It is, and it's not even the electronically adjustable suspension, you know. And I, I'm not sure whether you need it. I'm not sure whether you need it. I'm not sure whether you need... If you're not worried about pillion comfort, I'm not sure whether you need to spend out the extra on the Tour version. Because it's another five grand, more or less. No, oh no, no, no. I mean, I guess if you need the extra luggage, and if you had a pillion regularly and they wanted to sit back in the backrest, that looked pretty comfy. But I, I don't like the look of that personally. It doesn't doesn't work for me. But I get the point. If you if you were taking your partner on the back, uh, then it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Because it'd be so comfortable sat on the back with the backrest and the armrest and all the rest of it. Well, you're you're going to find out in a minute. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> we're we're going to do a little swap. We're going to have, have a go on each of them on the back. Because oh these God. sorts of bikes you have to, because it's snow, these sorts of bikes you have to test out the rear passenger facilities, don't you? Test out the facilities. So Greg's going to be the tester to see which one is more comfortable as a pillion, from a pillion's perspective. So first up, the gold wing. Cracked up. Oh, let's put the old footboards down. Look at those. Look at that. Is a luxury, isn't it? Well, I've never football. seen footboards like it. Footboards and everything for Get the out. pillion. You ready? Let's see if you book it. Yeah, you still record. Go, mate. You can you take the weight? Yeah, I got you. <sighs> Don't even notice him. Oh, I've got a backrest. Got a backrest. Ready? Okay, I'm ready. Well, honestly, so far, it is so comfortable. <laughs> I, I can't even feel you. Do you know what I mean? I can't feel you as a pillion behind me. Ready? I'm ready. Oh no, I don't like it. <laughs> don't do that. Now I we're going like to do the, the, the twisty route now. No. Get the peg scrape in. No, don't. Oh. No. Oh. Mine's bombing. Yeah, Are you I mean, in I, sport I, I don't, mode? I can tell it's got a bit of extra weight. Yeah. But it's not too bad. Oh. How's it feel? Scary. <laughs> no, it's um, it's so comfortable. It's really good. That's the that. footboards are in a perfect position, and because it, you can go flat-footed on them, really nice. Yeah. That little tiny backrest, which doesn't look like it would do much, it makes all the difference. It's I, I honestly don't know why you'd need the touring version from a passenger comfort point of view. Yeah. Because I mean, you've I'm got a backrest, I can lean on it. 
Yeah. Really nice. And I can't even feel you. As, you know, you're not against me, are you? Do you know what I mean? It, no, it's not, got not so much all. room, haven't you? Yeah. That's a top top marks for the uh, for the golden, I think. Then. I think the DCT box works better for a pillion as well because yeah. you don't get that gear change lunge. Yeah. That's and and like when you're pulling away with you know a pillion, it's quite heavy. Sometimes you can stall it or you know it, it's so smooth from standstill. Listen to that engine. Oh, I don't like it. Stop! I don't like it. God blimey. No, this is really really nice as a pillion. I absolutely hate being a pillion, <laughs> but it's very it's very comfortable. The footboards are brilliant. What's it got then? Where are the footboards there? Hey, look. Oh yeah. So your feet are completely flat. It's really nice, that. It's oh, wow. really that really is nice. nice, isn't it? Right. So on to the BMW. If you go too fast, I'm throwing the key away. <laughs> I don't like oh. it. I really don't. You in? I mean, oh, it doesn't feel it doesn't it's, feel it's, anywhere near as comforting. Does it not? No, it feels I feel exposed <laughs> because there's nothing. I'm gonna have to hold on more because it, that, the, the gold wing, you you just sort of clunk into the seat really nice. Yeah, I, I can feel yeah. you behind me as well. Yeah, this feels like I, honestly, it's nowhere. If, I would actually just say it's nowhere near as nice. Nowhere near? No, no, it's nowhere near. It's nice. There we go. Here's the clutch now. Look. Yeah. You've got extra weight, you've got a bit more no, slippage to do. Quick though! No! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, it's not it's not uncomfortable on the back here, but you haven't got the boards for your feet, the position doesn't feel as natural, the seat's comfier on the Honda Goldwing and the backrest. These don't. No! No, no John! Don't, don't, please don't! <laughs> I hate it! <laughs> you wanker! I, mean, I could tell you've got this, I've got something on the back. On the gold wing, I could tell, but it's much more obvious that you, I've got a pillion on. Much more obvious. Yeah, it feel, it's, not, it's not... I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually want to do a massively long journey on the back of this. I think you'd need the... Uh, the GTL, I think, which is the K1600 GTL, which has got the proper touring rear seat. I think it'd be absolutely fabulous then, but it doesn't, yeah, it feels a bit exposed back here, to be honest. And also my legs feel really exposed because they're obviously round you. And there's less wind protection on my legs on the back of this than the Honda. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely, even from a, from a rider's perspective, it's more obvious you've got a pillion as well. Yeah. It's a win for the Honda there. I can see why I'm never pillion because I don't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> like to be in control. Yeah, you do, don't you? It's just, I'm not saying you're not in control, but it's just <laughs> I'm not in control. Well, I think this is the most sedate we've ever been down this road. Jesus, it's got some go, is not it? Well, it's 160 horse is a lot of power, isn't it? Well, this does go, though. In the real world, in this sport mode, it's not bad, is it? No, it's no slouch. The couch is no slouch. Oh, I've stalled it now. I think I have forgotten how to ride a motorcycle since I've been on that gold there. You've got your hands on those, so... I know, I don't know how I've done it. <laughs> That's just a warning, mate. It's, it does that. When, you, when it realises you're starting to fall for it, it's like, warning, you're starting to like this bike. Ready? Three, two, one, go. He went before me. I did it, I can't do it down to one, I'll do it again, do it yeah, again. Yeah, no, you'd go before you got down to go. <laughs> did I know? <laughs> yes, you did. I'll do Just three, two, start. three, two. Three. A bit of hover travel as part of this video, because we do need to go to the Isle of Wight. For no, no, for no other reason, really, that I want to go on the other craft. The uh, stewardess is just going around, do you want to go on vodka <laughs> If you want to turn right, you push right. Right. If you do that on a bicycle, you go left. Yeah, yeah, sir, okay. And they're driving the eight rudders that you see there moving. Oh, I see, see them moving. Oh, the actual now. rudder behind the propellers, yeah, I can see it, yeah. I'll